Our next guest is uh, the managing director of one of the leading global providers of crypto solutions for business, and it's managing director Naveen Gupta of Ripple joining us uh, here in the studio. Thank you very much for your time and joining us here on Talk 100.3. Where did your crypto journey begin? Um, so about six years ago, I was wondering what to do with my life, and uh, I, I looked at two technologies. So one, I looked at AI machine learning. I looked at blockchain crypto, and I said, I love this. And um, I, I, I applied to a few firms, got accepted at Ripple and a couple of others, and that's how I got into cryptos. This is incredible, you know, considering the fact that uh, uh, when you started off, that was a time when the journey for most of the cryptocurrencies actually started. And uh, people who onboarded at that time with their monies literally didn't know what they were investing into, but made some good money. And if they stayed, they burnt a lot of money too. How do you break it down to a common man who's probably thinking, scared, has that fear that, hey, cryptocurrency is here to stay? Yeah. So first of all, um, you have to look at the fundamental nature of the cryptocurrency and what benefits it gives to the society, because otherwise you'll get lost into the speculation. Mm -hmm. So let's leave the speculative part aside, right? So let's say, sim in simple form, cryptocurrencies get traded 24-7, 365 days a year. All traditional finance gets traded or works only 95, banks close 95, Monday to Friday. That means on holidays, nothing's available or nothing significant's available. So let's take an example of remittance. Kitch wants to send money to Naveen. We both are in two different countries. Uh, I don't know about that. No? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's, let's assume you do. Yeah, okay, right? yeah, sure, in, sure. In, in a hypothetical world, <laughs> right? And let's assume you do, and let's assume you were in Singapore and I was in Australia. So the way the money moves around the world is it gets converted from Singapore dollars into US dollars and from US dollars into Australian dollars. And normally people would lose about 7%. 700 basis point in between this friction. That means if you were to send me $200, I'll only receive $184. Send me $200, I'll only receive $184 at the other end. And that's a large principle to you mm. lose. And if you were to do, for example, using a digital asset or a cryptocurrency, which we do, then the loss that you will have is almost minimal. Instantly, the money will move. And the way money will move is it'll move from Singapore dollars into XRP and XRP into Australian dollars. Do, do you think, Very simple. Uh, when, when the economy here moved from a Monday to Friday, moved from a Sunday to Thursday week uh, to a Monday to Friday week, did that have any impact on, on the trading and the way people used to trade here on the UAE share markets? Because you were able to trade here on the Sunday when the rest of the world was also on holidays. Yeah, but what happens is if you are able to trade on Sunday, but liquidity is less, right? Because the global yeah. markets are closed. So what happens is there is a power in synchronization, but there is in cryptocurrencies, there's power in synchronization in terms of 12 o'clock in the night on Sunday, you could still do the trade. So you're basically bringing two open order books together, Singapore dollar XRP, XRP Australian dollars and making use of that 12 o'clock at night on a Sunday to make a transfer possible. This is interesting. You know, now that you put perspective to, you know, what cryptocurrency could do potentially for uh, not just individuals, but business units as well. With a lot of regulations coming in the UAE, UAE has become a fertile market for uh, people who are investing or are dealing in cryptocurrencies. Where does this take UAE as a market? Yeah. So first of all, regulation is positive. And mm. the reason it is positive is it allows people to come into the market for any use case without fear, to essentially say, my investor protection is there, my customer protection is there. Companies who are building use cases can say, hey, you know what, I will not be on the wrong side of the law if I'm building this just because somebody thinks it's bad, because now there is a published regulation with it. Yeah. So the whole ecosystem goes up. So if you look at Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley had essentially three things. It has bright engineers, it had the VC capital, and it had the enabling regulations from the US through which the internet took off. And I can see the same thing in the UAE happening, where, as you know, a lot of bright people, crypto developers are moving to the UAE. There is VC capital now available, and uh, there is enabling regulation, which is moving in the positive direction. And it has the same three ingredients that happened with Silicon Valley to happen here in the UAE. It's the perfect Venn diagram, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. You've got the, got the three of them available for you. Um, talking about Ripple, um, why, do you, why does Ripple... I'm, I'm, I guess you're answering the question. Uh, why does Ripple like this region? You know, I guess it leans on what you just said. But also, what are the future plans for the organization? Yeah. So for us, in Ripple, we were always clear from the start, we are not running a science experiment, right? We are after a real use case, real problem that everybody in this region experiences on a daily basis. It may be 
90 percent of the population is immigrants, right, who have moved here and call UAE now their home, but they sometimes send money back to their families on a regular basis. And we import a lot of stuff for which we have to send money back to within GCC or outside of GCC. So cross-border remittance is like a domestic payment always. So that's the reason it made very natural sense for our largest use case to be essentially calling UAE our home. We are established in DIFC multiple years ago. Our office is increasing. In fact, we are tripling the size of our office from where we were currently just because we can't keep up with the growth. You know, I mean, if you look at the crypto market in the last couple of years, it has been a little inconsistent, if I may use the word. Uh, and 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 generally, if you see every every crypto uh, coin, uh, generally trades on the basis of what we see of Bitcoin, the the big daddy. Uh, how does one then, you know, keep their trust intact on one product, say XRP, when there are others that impact XRP's uh, XRP's performance? Yeah. So I think the easiest way to think about it would be one could have a speculative lens, right? And that's mm -hmm. what most of the people are doing. We are not into that speculative lens. We are in the utility lens, right. right? So if you truly believe that the utility, like I described to you, and a number of other use cases make sense, then it's just a matter of time that it gets cr critical mass and gets into escape velocity. And that utility essentially drives the real value mm. behind a digital asset and not the vice versa. I mean, the, the value is not driven by purely speculation because at some point, speculation was to go, will become not so useful. Let's take an example of oil. Let's assume anything, oil was of no use to anybody, right? Nobody's putting it in there's their no vehicles. There's no value Yeah, there's no value for it, right? And you can talk about it, drive up the price, but basically, mm. inherently, it's of no use to anybody. Is that probably the biggest problem that you find with crypto and blockchain, that there's still uh, the people that understand the concept and how they can best utilise like that first example you mentioned, it's one of the fastest ways to transfer money without being tied down with FX rates. Um, but how can the sector actually rebuild trust and confidence? Because when you hear about dodge coins coming in and then the growth and then the plummet, people then have their their miscon you know their their preconceived ideas and they latch on to something like that and realize no the whole thing I don't want to go anywhere near it how can the sector win those people over yeah so it it will happen two ways so one is just the natural law of nature what is the natural law of nature is forest fires forest fire kills the weeds so right now forest fire is going on and you would see lots of weeds essentially getting killed and you will be able to see the trees that are standing, and these are stronger trees, that tree, the trees have some deep roots yeah. that the forest fire is not able to kill, right? And then second, I would say enabling regulation as well, a progressive regulation as well, which essentially creates accountability on anybody who's essentially coming in the sector to say, hey, you can't be fraudulent. If you are, you will be prosecuted by the full extent of the law. And then second, if you're a good person doing the right thing, then the law will make sure that you're able to prosper. See, you know, investment, whenever you think of investment, one thing that you always have a keen eye on is uh, past performances and what are the use case scenarios which will enable me and my buck that I'm putting in, uh, in, in an organization, in a company, in a stock or a coin uh, to get through upwards. Now, with, with XRP, we have a, a very strong use case here. We have seen a good uh, past history as well definitely makes me wonder that okay fine I, I would want to put my buck here but that is just one aspect of it right the utility of XRP like you mentioned in the FX case can it be turned on uh, the switch can be turned on for someone who wants to actually utilize it as a transfer uh, vehicle yeah I think to me it's it's very very simple right so exactly the case that I took between Kitch and Naveen mm -hmm. you could essentially do it within your own a digital asset exchange itself. So you take a digital asset exchange here in the UAE, right? Take your AED or say, for example, if if you're in Singapore, Singapore dollars, and you just do it by yourself, right? Okay. And whatever gives you a better output in Australian dollars, your bank versus doing through uh, your digital asset exchange. I get it. You say, hey, you know what? It brings me benefit. It is giving me one Australian dollar or five Australian dollars more than I, what I would have got at the bank. And let's assume uh, instead of paying 7%, you're paying 2%, for example. Then there is a direct 5% benefit to your bottom line which you can essentially use. And then you can essentially gain that trust, gain that utility to say this works. You know, and all it, we are doing is this at a bigger scale, Gorang Gotang scale versus doing just one on one. Well, well, you know, it, it's, it was said at one point in time that the, the TV killed the radio star, right? Is this format going to kill the exchange houses? I think this format is not going to kill the exchange houses, but it'll definitely let the most efficient provider win. 
Right. So I think in remittances, there's a huge amount of opaqueness today. There is a huge amount of, let's say, average service that's available to a lot of your listeners. And that will improve dramatically. As it happened, say, for example, did email kill the post offices? Yeah. The answer is no, nobody killed anybody, but people just went to email because it was so super efficient. And Kitchen Naveen, we could just send an email while we're sitting next to each other, or we could be in Australia and Singapore. It could still be the same price sending emails to each other. Well, I love it. I'm going to replay that last bit to my dad. He might understand it finally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Naveen Gupta, the Managing Director of Ripple uh, across the Mini region. Thank you very much for coming in and sharing your time and expertise with us. Love being here. Thank you very much. We should get you in for uh, a longer chat at some other point. We'll be more than happy to. Talk 100.5.